Uh, this is the so-called secret underlying matter. So if the thing we acknowledge is the material world is comprised of perceptions or information downloaded from the external reality into our organic computer, then what is the source of this information or light? If the matter doesn't have a self-operating existence and is only a perception, this perception must have been initiated by another source and it must be in continuous perpetual motion or matter will cease to exist. Within the mystery systems of Judaism, which is Kabbalism, it is perceived that the Holy Grail is a set of high magical incantations utilizing words and mathematics that will transform the physical reality atom by atom, molecule by molecule. It is also believed within that system of thought that the nature of reality is basically an illusion. This Holy Grail of course, it's not really a holy grail. It's basically the DNA. That's also the tree of life uh, or the Kabbalistic tree of life. The petnitir. Petnitir means the um, cake of the divine. You know, with uh, any cake, there's plenty of ingredients. So um, the ingredients that are um, required within the, the cake of the divine are said to be those nine different spheres, as well as in the Kabbalist, uh, Ka uh, the Kabbalistic or tree of life, those nine spheres in one at the top equaling ten, and then one in the center equaling eleven, as Doth in the center. So you have uh, you have Asir or Atim. Actually, you have Asir at the top. You have uh, Sakir. Uh, meaning spirit or basically just also the um, secret is where we get the word secret from. Um, then you have Tahuti, wisdom. Then you have Ma'at, the balance of truth, love. And then you have Harukatu or Haruketu, Keti. Um, that's the light of the two ways the, or the two lights of, um, of the way. Um, then you have Haru, the light. Then uh, Heteru, um, the house of light where everything is gestated and birthed. It. Then you have um, Sebek, it's the sublimator, the one who separates as well, but the one who sublimates the energy from the house of light and the light, the light being semen basically, but it's also the energy that's, that's being uh, transduced into the physical reality by way of Tahuti. Remember, Tahuti is. Um, the one who transduces the information and what took place in the storyline is to who he gave Haru his um his um right eye back or his left eye back and his right um, brain activities or his creative um abilities. And then um after um the A spirit of Sebek, then we have um I set the ninth spirit, then the tenth spirit of Geb, the planet Earth or Malkut on um, the Kabbalistic tree of life, Malkut representing uh, the kingdom. But those different spirits are basically, again, the, um, it's the representation of the blastula cell or the or mitosis, the first cell being split into two and the four and the eight, and then the one being Amin Ra or, or Ra, whether or not um, being the light giving that energy on uh, life. Um, basically also is the DNA. If you look at the tree of life, you see that it's uh, formulated somewhat like the DNA. You see, it has, and it, as well as the Mecca bar, has those different uh, triads within it, up and down. So if they move around a little bit, you know what I'm saying, you, you see what it is, but basically that's the um, Holy Grail as well. You know what I'm saying? And through different incantations or words, uh, haikus, we open up those portals. You know, I gave you guys that um, that one little system, you know, um, the watch of Head Knock the Loo is kind of powerful. And also the um, wearing of the heart. The, it's the old school wearing of the heart, but the, the new school is the new pool. Um, I am affirmations, basically, Nupu Hakus and Dual Hakus. Praise affirmations and uh, I am affirmations. Well, I am power words and um, praise power words. 
So, um, like I said, I did those right there, not even really paying attention to the definition because we don't want to get caught up on what is defined as because that's that, that ain't what the DNA is, is located. The DNA know what it is regardless if we do physically in our own personality. Remember, the personality is perceiving. The higher state, the true self, is the one conceiving and saying, go out here and do this. You know, so when we get caught up on trying to be, actually trying to be, because we're not going to be the true self. The true self has already done this stuff. It's already done it. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to just be doing what we're supposed to be doing physically. That's why I be beating my ass up, you know, training in the martial arts, because that's the, that's what the physical thing is. It's part of my DNA, but yet still the DNA is infinite. It's past, present, and future. You know what I'm saying? So it's already been done all this stuff. So I had to I had to find out by going deeper into the meditations what I was supposed to be doing physically to not just um please myself, but appease to and not to be subjugated or be a slave to but to balance and connect with the true self, you know what I'm saying? The Sahu man, you know, you know what I'm saying? Going through the nine different uh, aspects of the, of the soul. Me and brother, the brother was speaking on the other day, uh, Jamal, we were speaking on how, uh, you know, we got the Kabit, the shadow, we have what is the Ren, um, the Kot, the Kabit, the Sahu, the Ab, the Sakim, um, then the Ku and the Ba, those different aspects of the um, nine eyes. But that Sahu man is the personality, basically. It's the, it's the lower self, we want to say, but it's the self, it's the personality. You know what I'm saying? That Sahu man can get caught up on its ways sometimes, but it is not the true self. The true self, that, the Sahu man is, is the perceiver. So again, the true self conceives the mind or the brain receives and then transduces the energy so that the physical brain or the physical body perceives. So when we, the perceiver, thinks that it is going to be the one that's creating as well, then we get frustrated because the creating process ain't taking place the way we perceive it to be within our ego. But when we let go and let God have it, I mean, we, we are the God, but God ain't localized in this physical time thing we got going on. It's that God already done it. We already done it. You know what I'm saying? So, when, but when we get so caught up on certain physical uh, activities, trying to, you know what I'm saying, that takes away from that energy. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So, sometimes it's best to sit still. And, and and do what we're supposed to do physically and let the God energy go do what it's supposed to do spiritually, intelligently. You know what I'm saying? Tell it what to do if you want to, if you feel like it, but don't go out there and try to do its job. You know, that's, that's like a, if you look, you look at it like this, you got a football team, you got quarterback, you got the center, you got the, uh, Got the linebacker over here, the wide receiver, the safeties, and all this on the other side, the, the cornerback. What if the linebacker say, hey, um, quarterback, I want to I want to play your position today. You know what I'm saying? That ain't going to happen. That, he might be able to throw the ball once, but he ain't going to be fast enough to juke. He gonna be, his arm ain't going to be strong enough to throw it down that 20-yard line accurately. Every time, you know what I'm saying? So everybody, we, as far as like that concern, we as physical entities connected to our true self, we don't have to do the job the true self is, has in order. We are here to do what we're doing in the experience. The true self already done it. And we're supposed to be experiencing it as far as it's being mapped out in the DNA. You know what I'm saying? So, but when we're dealing with now time, that means we have the inner peace and we accept. We go through that process of the emotional exchange where we take those negative lower energies or those emotions and we exchange them for positive higher energies or whatnot. 
I say higher, but when we say higher, lower, that means we we are saying something is better than the other. And that's not a balance. Basically, with that word, with our words, sometimes we need to have constructive, you know, criticism of how we are speaking to ourselves. You know, even when, you know, we talking to others because higher means that this is sitting up on a plateau and it's better than, but it is the same thing. Like I was speaking out of the Dow again right here, um, not just, um, but it states right here. High and low depend on each other, right? You know, being and not being create each other. When people say some things are beautiful, other things become ugly. When people say some things is good, when people see some things is good, other things become bad. So once we start saying, oh, that's good, then it's over here going to be bad now. But all in all, again, everything is everything. All things are the same. So long and short, define each other. High and low depend on each other. You can't be a high without a low. They balance each other. But once we start saying higher mind or higher intelligence, that's why the, I entitled the, the infinite hidden light of the intelligence. It's not the higher or lower self. It is the self. Knowledge of self. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's higher and, and lower representation. Yeah, we, we say it, but sometimes we need to transform and transduce that energy to where it's more affirmative, to, to where we have a balance. And that balance is in love. You know what I'm saying? So basically, all I'm saying is, um, I, I know I, I say it still, but I notice I'm like, hold on, higher, lower, but all in all, we as um, being connected to that higher state, you know, again, I said it, I know, it, but being connected to our true self, that true state of our being, we have to let go sometimes of trying to in trying to force the in issue, intent over force, you know what I'm saying? The intent is the heart, that's the balancing, that's her root, that's the sun. So we have a task to do here objectively as far as being physical in this physical walk. But when we get caught up trying to um, force what initiated the task in the first place, already the, the energy or the dark energy, dark matter already to move through the universe. It is, you know what I'm saying? We are that, you know what I'm saying? But once these physical things start to become real or to us and the matter becomes so heavy or, or so gross that the atlas or whatever, you know, that, that first vertebrae in our cervical vertebrae at the, right there at the tip of the neck, just start weighing down and our shoulders start tensing up trying to carry all that weight around then that, that's the frustrations, that's tension, that's stress. And that stress in turn turns into all type of physical um, ailments from the mental association to the emotional to the physical all the way through. That's because we're not allowing the spirit or the intelligence, the higher intelligence to do what it was supposed to do in the first place. We're trying to control the intelligence. So we need to get back to that inner peace, the inner happiness, to where we are accepting, we are uh, loving, we are happy, we are um, patient, and as well as we have courage. So we will be able to walk into this physical existence with this courage, we'll walk into it with love and accept it, and we'll be able to have patience with everything and everyone. And that way the energies, because this, this internal energy, what I just went over was basically transforming negative emotions like Fear into courage, hate into love, you know, sadness back into happiness, um, anger into acceptance, and uh, worrying into patience. So when we convert those inner energies into a, those positive energies or whatnot, then what's going to take place is the organs, which are also connected to the dark energy and dark matter, will be able to utilize those enzymes and those hormones and that blood to do other things because it's not going to be ill or sick or whatever. It's not trying to fix something all the time, you know what I'm saying, in the physical body. So then it can be, it can be utilized externally properly and we ain't got to force it, you know what I'm saying, because if it's trying to heal, 
inside, then that's force. But if it's already healed, or even if we put the mind into an intent over force, then that energy is going to be like, wow, that felt good. I'm going to do something. For you. It's, all, it's like a give, take. You know what I'm saying? You give some, take some, give some. But it ain't no, it ain't no, you know, give, give, or take, take. It ain't like, damn, I'm depleted. You know, because once you give something, that's why I, I say give black. You know what I'm saying? You give the black, then black give back. You know what I mean? So if you give to your true self, then that true self is just going to pop out. What does the electron do? What does the wave function do? What does the wave do when we observe it? It pops out into electron. The electron forms or manifests the reality. But that wave form or that um, wave function is basically, again, potential, infinite potential. Now, in our observation, we have to have a still mind and, well, you know, have this feeling of love based on uh, based on love in uh, in contrast to fear because once we put that fear again there uh, then it's that that's false evidence or false experience appearing real and what's going to take place is when it's formalized or when the creative process or whatnot is going on it's going to form into the fear that's already here so when we place love on it then the what will take place is the reactive type of energy that comes back and activates into the physical atmosphere will be something new and balance that fear or that what has been what's going on now. So I mean, if y'all notice, and even inside of what we were thinking is love, because love ain't based on what we have interpreted physically in our perception. We have to go back to the true self, the conceiver of love, and then be able to bring it down through the transducer of the brain or the mind and really see it in that non-state or that non-movement, you know what I'm saying, what it is in actualization. We get caught up on the movement of the energy from where it is uh, located here physically in this movement not from where it initiated from in the primal movement, the primal mobile. So that's that initiating spark, your true self, that two-dimensional flat surface, that black dot. All right, so um, this is the so-called secret underlying matter. So if thing we acknowledge as the material world is comprised of perceptions or information, downloaded from the external reality into our organic computer, then what is the source of this information? That's dark energy, dark matter is the source of this information. If the, or consciousness, basically we call it consciousness, but truly it's intelligence. Because we have a misconception of what consciousness is, basically. Hold on, we get to that. If the matter doesn't have a self-operated existence, it's only perception, this perception must have been initiated by another source. All right, so within the mystery system of Judaism, that's called Kabbalism is perceived as the Holy Grail. We just spoke on that. So we are conditioned to think of space as being empty and matter as being solid when the reality is that matter is completely it's insignificant. 99.9999% empty space. Scientists thought of an atom as a hard ball, and then they said the atom was a point surrounded by a probability cloud of electrons popping in and out of existence. Then scientists found that the nucleus, which is the most dense aspect of the atom, also popped in and out of existence, the same way the electron does. The most accurate conclusion towards the nature of the atom is that it is a thought, a mass of concentrated information, light, a wave of intelligence. So we go back to atom, atom. Atom is nine being, tim, right? Or complete or incomplete. It can also be discerned as the, a mass of concentrated information, light, a wave of intelligence. Concentrated information. Information that's being concentrated into a cluster of light. Wave intelligence. A wave of intelligence that's coming from the opposite end, floating in by way of semen or whatever you want to call it. Also, that's through the fatherly energy. 
you know, dark energy coming into the mother, the womb, dark matter, and formulating into the sun, the material, baryonic um, material that we have. As far as like planets and, and suns, and um, as we spoke on earlier, um, um, meteors and comets and things like that. The human aura, for instance, is an illuminated living energy field that extends beyond physical boundaries. It is the light extension of our soul essence. Biophotons are particles of light which emanate off of all living things. These biophotons transmit our consciousness and information similar as a train going by part itself. Information similar to the sounds and images transmitted from a TV or radio from wave frequencies we can't see with the physical eyes. The origin of the transmission is unknown, yet we still receive the information. So these biophotons transmit our consciousness and information similar to the sounds and images transmitted from a TV or radio from wave frequencies we can't see with the physical eyes. The origin of the transmission is unknown, yet we still receive the information. So what it's talking about is the frequencies that are coming from the um, the wave function. So these biophotons coming by way of the sun, you know, step down information. We have universal cosmic information, then we have galactical information, then we have solaric information, then there's another step down to photonic information. That photonic information, photon, photo, light, photon, light of the sun, pataon, pataon, pet, heaven, he, infinite, ta, earth. So pata meaning the infinite light or the, the infinite Pata on, on meaning light of sun. So Pata, heaven, um, te or ta, earth, he, infinite. So the infinite um, light from heaven to earth. So that photon is this infinite light that's spiraling down and then formulating into DNA, you know, basically. But all things have DNA within it, formulates into that DNA by way of dark energy from the step down. Cosmic universal, that's dark energy, step down into galactical energy, you know, going into um, dark matter, and step down into solaric energy, going into the baryonic or these into the um, the suns and you know, again, the the material type of aspects of our dark energy and dark matter. So then it, it steps down to um, the other aspects of life, you know what I'm saying, as physical. So as above, so below. With that photon, these bio photons, that bio means in, inside of the physical um, biology of man, these bio photons transmit our consciousness and information. The brain or Tahuti thought, you know what I'm saying, through um, transduces, melanin transduces the vibration into sound and the heat into light so that we can discern it as consciousness or intelligence. And this information is very similar to how TVs get the information by way of these frequencies that we don't see, but yet then we get this information transmitted to us by way of the TV or the radio. You know what I'm saying? But the frequency we don't necessarily see the, or the radio frequency or, you know what I'm saying, or the, the television signals. But then we see this, this light and this sound, we hear the sound is coming from that. It's a sine wave, that's a, um, that's a, um, what you call it, that's a um, wavelength right there or um, wave function. And that's the letter M, M again, mem, mother, Mother means, um, or mem means blood, water, as well as chaos. That look like chaos right there, but then it comes into, when it, it's balanced, right here, it's the same image, basically, same symbol. When both are, are balanced, set in the root, are standing together, then we have life. You know, you got, the, you got, you got night and you got dark. 
You know what I'm saying? If you know anything about growing crops, vegetation, you have to have a, a, a vegetation state where it's going to be light and dark. You have to have a light, a time for the sun to hit it and a time for the dark to hit it. Imagine if all the, imagine if trees got sunlight all day long, 24 hours. Or imagine if that tree got darkness all day long. If it got sunlight all day long, it's going to grow too fast and degenerate. If it got darkness all day long, it ain't going to grow at all. It's going to grow slow and fall apart, dilapidate a lot faster. But that balance is what grows that tree for hundred and something years. You know, so that tree will do what it's going to do. Everything in this reality exists as waveforms, sometimes called patterns or scene waves, signatures, or sound waves. Everything from our body planets to the entirety of the universe are waveforms. Dimensional overtones are differentiated base rate wavelengths. The difference between this dimension and another is the distance or length of the wave. This is very similar to a TV or radio transmission. When you change the channel of the TV or the radio, it changes what you're observing from that device. It is the same for dimensional overtone shifts. If one alters the base rate wavelength of their perception, and by doing such, change the physical patterns of their body to a wavelength different from this reality into an alternate dimension or universe, the indivisible dual self would disappear from this world and reappear in the dimension that is attuned to their conscious. As one elevates into dimensional levels, the wavelengths become shorter and higher frequencies are produced, which in turn imparts more energy and light. As one descends dimensional levels, the longer the wavelengths become with less energy and more densely developed. So there we go with the um, short wavelengths and long wavelengths. If you recall, this, with these uh, technological devices that we have, these electronic devices in the house, good tips, tricks, unplug before you go to bed. You know, um, remember to get away from that 60 hertz um that's a that is a very right here what it say right here is one descends dimensional levels the longer the wavelengths become all right we don't want long wavelengths we want short wavelengths short wavelengths hold high frequencies long wavelengths hold short frequencies or extra low frequencies all right so these elfs are carried on long wavelengths because the longer they can have a deeper resonance or vibration or sound that's continuous. You know what I'm saying? We want high frequency, so we need short wavelengths. In the short wavelengths, it's able to hold and condense more light or energy. So therefore, like when we go to bed at night, unplugging everything, no lights on, you know, that, that melatonin is going to produce and we'll be in a dark state. So the pineal gland can activate. And when the melatonin goes in and it is on a short wave frequency, it activates certain qualities within that DNA and that DNA flourishes and pops up. You know what I'm saying? And that is intent over force. You know what I'm saying? The force right now, it's a, it's a so-called evil force, or whatever you want to call it in the experience, is... Um, deactivating our DNA or our um, genetic expression. There are specific wavelength harmonics between this universe and the next just the star spaces between each note on piano that will produce a different sound. So it serves to be the same dimensions, overtones, and universes. All the notes in the chromatic scale equals 13 notes. Friday 13, happy Friday 13. Um, the 13th note defines the next octave or dimension. It's a new beginning. Just like the 13th letter in the, um, the um, alphabet is M, 26 letters. 13 plus 13 is 26. The 13th letter defines a new beginning. The letter is M. M is, again, blood, chaos, and water, wave. You know what I'm saying? So that's that potential right there of a new beginning, a new dimension. It's the next octave or overtone. Each note or overtone produces a different octave of experience with more universes and dimensions to explore. So each overtone, each 13th note has a new or it has a different universe and different dimensions to explore. 
So there are infinite possibilities of expression by way of the intelligence that creates the perception which transports our souls through these dimensional doorways. Remember, each soul is basically that black dot, that mecha bar, that's connected to the larger mecha bar of the um, dark energy, dark matter, or the undifferentiated energy matter. So these dots, these 144 that initiated off of that, the 144,000, the first fruits, the, you know what I'm saying, the first sparks that, that flew off of that are interconnected throughout the universe, this, you know, this holographic universe, formulating all of these different types of energies that's outside of us. We are doing that, you know what I'm saying, intentionally, intent over force, you know what I'm saying? All right, but right here, there are overtones. That's how, that's how this is popping off. There are overtones produced at different octaves of experience with more universes and dimensions to explore. So we think and we're here right now, but we somewhere else in another dimension doing the same thing in a different light. And then there's another dimension with another overtone and other, because there's infinite possibilities within the infinite potential of the wave function. The wave function, again, basically is Kim. It's the no thing. You know what I mean? So that no thing is on the other side of this physical holographic expression of the universe. It's coming forth from that. It is, it's the picture. The painter is still over there painting. That's us. The true self. You know what I'm saying? The reason I say us is because you're, you're on here. You know what I mean? So, so therefore, if you are walking towards these certain things in your life right now, it's only for one purpose and reason. Remember, the purpose ain't the reason and the reason ain't the purpose. Some people think it's because they're trying to get some money, trying to manifest something for their children. They're trying to save their, their marriage or get mom and daddy right because they got diabetes. No, not really. It's just because that's who you are. You know, you, you're doing it like that in your physical personality right now. But sometimes we got to let go of what we are perceiving as our personality and allow the conceiver that has, con has already done the creation process for us, the physical thing, all that has been done and taken care of, regardless, irregardless of what's going on with mom and daddy and with our children. I, I know I love my children. I love my mom and dad. Got to. That's the balance. You know what I'm saying? But we also have to relocate that from a physical sense into the true self. They are only outward representations of what is taking place inside of our heart is something for us to look at and to experience and to be able to say wow look at me on that as my mama look at me as my child look at me as this white person over here look at me as this tree look at me as this bumblebee look at me as this piece of shit look at me as this car look so all these physical things is out here in this multiplicity it's really us expressing ourselves externally from an inner reality through that transformation or the transference of energy. Remember, energy can't be destroyed or created. It can only be transferred and transformed. So as this dark energy and dark matter is being formulated and transformed or transferred to another entity or substance or object in the physical sense, you got to remember where it's coming from. It's initiating from this right here, these overtones produce different octaves of experience with more universes and dimensions to explore. Each individual, indivisible dual self as well as the objectives outside of the dual self are only dimensions that are being explored. They're overtones. We look at this thing like it's a book and then we look at the words like they words. They're, they're just represented to us from another dimension so that we could be reminded Remember, you know, see, so remember what happened with time. Time, again, another um, definition of time is the mind, to divide the mind. So that to remember means to put the mind back together or to put all things back together. They dismembered Othea to 14 different pieces. But today, 13 and 1, January, we're putting those pieces back together. So what the pieces that have been fragmented in, in this multiplicity of reality are all within us. But as we're looking at it from an external point of view, 
it's been jagged and we got those earthquake pieces, you know, in that glass. So now we can't really see ourselves. So we got to get that smudge off of there, you know, get some Windex or something, not really. Get some ammonia, you know, some carbon and ammonia, you know, the chemical stuff, the chemical attributes for melanin. And we, uh, and then we, we clean that window and we make it anew. You know what I'm saying? By seeing that the window ain't even really there. The mirror is not really there. You know what I mean? See the energy or see the dark energy, dark matter that is formulating that thing there. That's that balance. That's that antimatter and matter coming into pure energy. And then being able to look at it in life as we walk. Like, wow. You know, and accept every experience for what it is. All right, so there are infinite possibilities of expression by way of the intelligence that creates the perception which transports our souls through these dimensional doorways. Between each universe and subspace or, or overtone universe, there is an absolute no thing or the void called the, the twat in comedic thought, bardo by the Hindis and wuchi by the Chinese. Each time we pass through one dimension or overtone, or overtone to the next, we pass through a void of blackness, darkness. That's that melanin. That's the dark energy, dark matter. The blackness of the void between the octaves is greatest and more powerful than the voids that exist within the octaves. So that blackness of the void between the octaves is greater than the power and more powerful than the void that exists within the octaves. All of these dimensional doorways and paths are superimposed on each other, so every point in space, time contains them all. The door to any of them is anywhere. So go back to this. That blackness is more powerful than the actual um, octave or the actual um, void that exists within the octaves. That blackness is equivalent to, um, for instance, uh, what is it, o Orion's belt, right? They say it's, uh, Orion's belt has um, the gateway to all interdimensional um, portals. You know what I'm saying? So that would be that blackness right there. You know what I'm saying? As far as on this side of um, those octaves and those overtones. So that blackness right there is like, it, it's, it's, it's what it say right here, each time we pass through one dimension over time, the blackness of the void between the octaves is greatest and more powerful. That means it has more dimensional doorways and more overtones than the void that's um, between the void that's between um, the octaves. The blackness of the void between the octaves is greater and more powerful than the voids that exist within the octaves. All right, so within the octaves, so we have octaves right here. That's a 13. But that blackness is right there at the end. So it says the blackness of the void between the octaves is greater and more powerful than the blackness that exists within the octaves. So within these octaves, we got, you know, overtones right here, we're not playing notes and stuff. But that blackness right here out there at 13, they say that one right there, right there. Well, we know for for sure, you know, already. You know, since it's the math one and three is four. You know, so that's that my eye. That's that balance, that love, that equality. But, you know what I'm saying, when we go from there to there, this void right here, that's some jump popping off right there because that is a new beginning. And right, so every point in space, time contains them all. The door to any of them is anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So like I was just saying, basically I said, uh, well, I said, I said, I said, uh, but uh, what I'm saying was uh, the door to any of them is anywhere right here. But basically I just said that some say, you know, they say that, um, Arrive Bill has that gateway to all interdimensional avenues, but intent over force, you know what I'm saying? Concepts are concepts, you know, that's the physical brain again, that's the perceptions of man. When we let go, let the spirit intelligence do it, do it raw, do it pure, you know what I'm saying? And then it ain't gonna be no blockages, no stops, no blocks. You know what I'm saying? That's Tachi saying, Tachi saying there's no, 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 no stops, no breaks. You know what I'm saying? So let it flow. You know what I'm saying? Basically, in the flow is uh, is, is one who has developed 
in the Tai Chi forms. I'm about to get into it, so I'm gonna do a couple. We're gonna do a couple Qi Gongs because next week uh, is the last session, and I get thanks for everyone for uh, attending and everything. Next week is the last session, and that is going to be all Tai Chi and Qi Gongs and, and and whatnot. We're gonna try to go over the form. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. You know what I'm saying, on the computer screen. It's just, I, I mean, I put it online, you know what I'm saying, as far as, like, the movements. I can, so you can have, the, you got the video, that's cool. But I've been teaching this small form in the class here for eight months now, the small Tati form, the one I threw online, and they we still ain't got it together, which is cool. I, I don't want, I'm moving slow with it, and it's always new students coming in or new participants. So I always go back to day one when the, a new student come in because I don't want them to be lost just by jumping on where we at. But it's a small form, so it's not many postures, any 36 postures and all. So it, it, it can be learned and developed pretty fast, but perfected, to perfect something and get in the flow is like a 10-year process, they say. And I've only been practicing Tai Chi for going on eight years, seven and a half, eight years now. People want to call me a master I'm a master student. I can say I'm a student all in all. I haven't mastered it. I got to that flow. Some people, I, I've heard that I had the flow, but I, I don't see it yet because I've been critiquing myself in the mirror. And I, I see it. I'm not wiping smudge off, but I see, oh, oh, another new smudge. You know, it's called Mickle. Um, This science was now quantum mechanics. Is set. Okay, let me get back right here. Quantum mechanics is a set of principles studying the subatomic and atomic level of matter. This science is known by the ancient masters of Afrocom, our brothers and sisters, for thousands of years. Quantum physics states that the observer influences the outcome or alters the consciousness of the experiment and collapses the wave function simply by observing. And this is all dependent on his or her belief patterns. The pineal gland, the master gland, the all-seeing eye, or the first eye, whatever title we choose, is the uppermost situated gland within the endocrine system. It looks like a pine cone with an opening, um, similar way where was I just moved it. It looks like a pine cone with an opening on one portion of it, which has a lens used for focusing light. It also has a color receptor inside of it, very similar to a cell phone. It has a built-in wireless transmitter. The pine gland allows communication with other realms of light, in essence, accessing higher dimensions and higher astral realms of light. Our ancient brothers and sisters had knowledge of dimensions, harmonics, and waves in the universes residing within the overtones and octaves. This is the reason behind the great architects of antiquity building temples and chambers in certain manners in order to amplify sounds, lights, and frequencies, so to alter the vibratory residence within the temples. It has been said that the ancient Egyptians performed secret rituals and spiritual exercises in the chambers of the pyramids to exercise, I mean, to increase the size of the pineal gland in order to access more frequency ranges to other dimensions and astral planes. This in turn made our ancestors Ankhstar highly intelligent and creative, sharpening their awareness with access to all universal mind, therefore gifting them with higher knowledge, passing this knowledge through their bloodline, basically through DNA, to us in the present. The pineal gland is our connection to the power source that permeates the universe, some call prana, chi, ki, or royal life force energy, when considering the powerful capabilities and functions of the pineal gland, why has this vital information been removed from the masses? From my own perspective, mainly due to the oppression of innate powers born within each human that the parasitic little wish to keep hidden in order to continue with, our, with their domination or demon nation, time, Tim, Assyria, divide. So demon nation, again, means to divide the mind. Nation means the collective, the collective divided mind. Um, and that mind or collective will be the whole, the earth, Gab, Asir, you know what I'm saying? So divide that time, the Tim, the um, non-being, you know what I'm saying? Dividing it into multiplicity. All right. So that domination is when we dominated by the manifestations of the external multiplicity. The, um, base, the multiplicity of our reality, physical reality. 
All right, so um, domination exercise and techniques. By the age of 12, a child's pineal gland is the size of a dry pea. When the lack of use, yet, yet more so from plots and methods that have caused contamination and calcification or crystallization of the pineal gland. These contaminants include fluoride in drinking water, vaccinations, MSG, artificial food colorings and flavors, food additives, as well as binders, fillers, and preservatives. To awaken the pineal gland a fraction, these items must completely be eliminated from my diet along with white salt, sugar, rice, and flour. Also, unplugging from the TV and radio for at least one year due to its hypnotic effect on the psyche. Psyche also is equivalent to the soul, our own um, two-dimensional type of uh, tele, tele and um, visual um, interpretation of the eyes. Um, all right, so also unplugging from the TV and radio for at least one year due to its hypnotic effect on psyche and the extra low frequencies, which influence the pineal gland to act in accordance to the message when information or light is being interpreted throughout the complete structure of the human aura. When the pineal gland is online and awakened, it will speed up your learning and memory ability, enhance your intuition, wisdom, creativity, sharpen your awareness, activate your psychic abilities, allow communion, with the ancestors, internal and external melanin, dark energy, dark matter, and bring about the highest experience of bliss, inner happiness, hotel. Meditation, reading, researching, and obtaining knowledge of self, the world, and the universe will also generate this awakening. I, um, not going to go into that right there. We're going to cut it in a second. We're going to go into... This will be sent to you uh, as well as, I'm going to go, go over this real quick though. Right? The Chi Life Force, since we're talking about time, Chi Life Force cycle in daily life. Um, so basically Chi Life Force, raw Life Force energy, prana, you know what I'm saying, um, dark energy, dark matter, basically internal and external melanin. So give black. So, in this circadian of the day, the sun cycle, or the cycle of the sun and the moon throughout the day, there are certain activities and certain, you know, qualities as far as um, the organs are concerned that we should uh, sometimes um, participate with and observe. All right, so 5 to 7 o'clock a.m., large intestines is waking up. So this is time to get ready for the day. Heavenly and earthly chi is pouring into the body. We just got out of the bed, like yawning, stretching, and getting that energy back in there. It's like a rapid flowing river. Activities should assist the embodiment of dreams. This time is a bridge between the spirit world and earthly world. So begin with light meditation, chi weight lifting, empty force breath, warm ups, tai chi, and chi gong, and finish with meditation. That's normally. On a good day, that's when I get my meditations in. I meditate between five and seven, and that actually helps you total recall your dreams. When you go into the meditation, you'll still be in both realms. You'll still be in the like the subconscious realm, twat or noon or amenti, you know, dark energy, dark matter. But you'll also be in the physical realm, you know, gear, maku, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But you'll be here. So when we when we go into that meditative state right then, you can basically, again, total recall your dream state and bring that thing to fruition um, more properly, you know what I'm saying, by being able to activate both realms at the same time. So this is a, a bridge between the spirit world and the earthly world. Begin with light meditation. Chi weight lifting is uh, basically... It's a relaxation and tension exercises where you're doing chi gums. It's also um, when you, um, like for men, some of the chi way lifting, they tie, now it's going to sound weird, they tie uh, like some rocks onto a string and then they uh, tie it around the penis. Yeah, I know, right? Women, they, they tie them around the, the breast. But basically, that's chi weightlifting. The other chi weightlifting is um, deep breathing, 
um, where you tight, tighten up all your muscles, then relax. Um, empty force breath is, is basically when you um, bring in your, your abdomen in on the inhalation instead of having your stomach go out. Tai Chi and Qi Gongs, um, warm-ups, finish with another light meditate or another meditation. I did that whole process for about like two years until I got a little bit busy <laughs> to where, uh, you know what I'm saying, I, I, would, uh, I, I couldn't get all that in because uh, it, it, it takes longer than five to seven to do that right there. It normally would take me about three, four hours to get all of it in. So I would eat breakfast about like nine o'clock. I'm about to go into that right there. So five to nine, I would be doing all that. And then I would eat breakfast about nine. Um, it works out though. It, it does. They say the most successful people in, in the world get up with the sun. So that's between five and seven. So we should be getting up out the bed and rising with the sun, you know. Um, so from 7 to 9 a.m., the stomach's starting to activate. This is the time that energetic dimension meets the material world of taste, nourishment, warmth, and splendor. A warm cooked breakfast or an all fruit breakfast, beginning with mostly alkalizing fruit first, and then this can be, and this can be the main meal of the day. So you can have a big old breakfast and you know keep everything else light throughout the day if, if you wish or you can have a light breakfast and eat a, a nice size lunch basically i drink for breakfast i don't eat anything at breakfast unless sometimes yeah maybe twice out the week i can't say i don't every day because sometimes i do eat some oatmeal or some queen for breakfast it depends on what i do the day before what i'm gonna like on my hard day workouts tuesday and sundays I generally would eat a heavier breakfast on that Monday or that Saturday. I'll eat, you know, something because I know I'm going to need that energy for the next day. And seeing that Sunday, I'm working out pretty hard, burning off a lot of energy. And then Monday come, you know, I'm going to rest a little bit. But then Tuesday, right next to it, I'm, it's going to be another hard day workout. So generally those two days, I'll eat something a little more protein if you want to say because you know the muscle and everything you want to regain that and you want to be able to have the energy for the next day if i'm going to do that hard day workout sundays and tuesdays are equivalent to sun energy days or heat days fire energy so on those fire energy days i go ahead and utilize those fire energies on the sundays and tuesdays even if it's mixed up i don't know it might not even be sunday and tuesday mars mars <laughs> means uh with twos means Mars in French. All right, so in Tuesday, D means uh, day. Like Mardi Gras means um, Tuesday, basically, or Mars Day. All right, so when we're talking about Mardi Gras, Gras means fat. So it's Fat Tuesday that they be celebrating down there in New Orleans and over there in French, in France. Excuse my Frank. I um the earth element oh, so most can it can be the main middle of the day. The earth element governs the digestion and absorption of chi. It also holds the center, providing peace, centeredness, and balance. It is about connecting and bonding with trust. I right, so um it's the earth element, the earth element, the stomach, the spleen, and the pancreas. Um this also Tahutia or the assimilator of the energy. So the earth elements, very powerful stuff, you know what I'm saying? Good shit. You want to balance all the energies, but um, so this is the center, it holds the center, providing peace, centeredness, and balance. You know, it's about connecting and bonding with trust. You know, so wisdom and patience and everything, and not overthinking, not being worried, you know, and trusting the situation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's stomach energy, but spleen is the next one. It's also connected to the stomach. Heart is connected to the stomach as well. Um, 9 to 11, spleen, action time. It's the action time, hard work, earthly problem solving, meetings with others, and healing of others. Absorption of chi continues with reading and writing, including studying of the classics, fulfillment of your grounded earthly mission. So this time of, the, of, your, of our day, this is the time where we, we study you know what I'm saying? I normally get 
my best studying and reading in at this yeah, that I, I go to the library about I work out or whatever I'm gonna do or do my inner sizes, my outer sizes. So um, and then between nine and ten, I'm going to the library. I'm in the library well after eleven though. I'm, I'm in at about one o'clock probably from nine to ten o'clock to about one reading and writing and studying and putting stuff together on, on like this right this stuff like this you know i i've had these i've had this for a while but you know just um doing things like that but uh putting it in piece to piece reading other things studying up on shit but uh do that for a couple of hours in in between 9 and 11. i started doing this uh, it's called the chinese clock when i got deeper into studying um, um, martial arts. You know, certain things I just I just trip up over. I'm like, well, what's the Chinese clock? You know, I ain't know nothing about this. It's in traditional Chinese medicine inside of a certain inside of one of these books. So I looked it up and I found it and it was about five years ago. And I was like, well I'm gonna try this stuff. I'm gonna see what it's like. You know, it's one thing to know something, but we got to apply it. To, to really experience. I mean, to know some of this information. That's just, I got big brains. Hey, hey, big brain. You know, but when you activating it, that means you experience it. And to know something, really to know something, means you have to experience it. Therefore, you have clarity through wisdom when you speak on it. If we're speaking about something, you can tell when somebody talks about something they don't really know about. Because to know something is to to experience it because knowing wisdom with knowledge wisdom and understanding or understanding or understanding are all one so when somebody is falsifying the truth one of those are going to be mislocated they're not going to be there you know what i'm saying that's like a a, a, a three-legged chair you know what i'm saying mind body spirit if we ain't got mind, body, and spirit connected as one, and we try to sit down on that four-legged chair, whatever, bam, it's gonna fall apart because it's not, there's no connection. So, yeah, um, reading and writing, and then going out there and actually uh, applying these things, what we read and, and, and stuff about and shit. That's where you get your answer from, from the ancestors. You know what I'm saying? That's when we ain't trying to force the issue. Intent over force. What is my intent? I just I want to read all this stuff. You know what I'm saying for what? So I can talk to y'all about it. Nah, I mean I went through the experience before I could tell you what it's about. You know what I'm saying? But that was for self, not for self, uh, selfishness, for self love, but for selfness or selflessness. You know what I'm saying? Basically to give back but also to be able to know what it is for myself. Because yes, of course, first self, then the source. You know what I'm saying? When I seen what it was doing and what was taking place and it's still doing, then I'm like, shit, I gotta get back, get black. You know what I mean? This, I can't just sit around and sit on this and be ignorant. You know, this is some powerful information through the experience. Now, some people might be born into a rich family and they got some rich information and they just go out and spit it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got my family well off. They are, you know what I'm saying? But they're doing their thing there in their experience as far as what they're concerned, their holographic expression or whatever. And I ain't going to say I, I don't comply to it or condone it, but as far as what they're doing is what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to speak on that because I'm not going through that experience. I went through that experience at a young age, but on this level right here, on this, this is a different type of whole scenario of the experience, you know, and I've seen some miraculous shit pop off out, there, out of that wave function, I'm trying to tell you. I mean, I, like I said, to talk about it ain't being about it, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I might say certain things, I might tell you certain things every once in a while, but some things, man, I just leave it where it's at and I walk away like to say to Dow, you know, just, just walk away sometimes. You know, don't reflect on it too much because the more you we talk about it, the less of the potential, the less of the power and the ability that it's going to have. 
Like I said, I mean, I know I'm, I'm a Gemini. And um, I, I can't, I can talk, I can talk and talk and talk, talk. I try not to, but like right now, I want to get to the Qi Gong, but I just talk now. All right, all right, let me get me. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Heart, creativity and hard work continue. Uh, so we're still doing creativity and hard work. I follow your heart and the next side spirit lives in your heart. I'm going to send this to y'all, all right? So 1.30 p.m. small test, that's lunchtime. If you ever notice breakfast at school and in these different type of systems, like you go to work, uh, hospitals, uh, prison, uh, um, different places, a factory, you know what I'm saying? They always have breakfast at school at 7 between, you know, right here, 7 to 9. But, you know, school is opening up. Um, Lunch is in between these hours. All right, but that small intestine time for lunch and start a begin phase as everything's starting to go down. Take the opportunity to switch off with the power nap, get some of that energy back. Um, brief meditation, you know, power nap, energy nap, energy, get that energy back. Um, the small intestine purifies creativity of the heart. 3 to 5 p.m., it's the bladder time. Time for activities that are more mundane and require little intellect or power. So, you know, basically uh, being, with, being with friends or, or if you're going to do some type of work like that, just dealing with the mind. Um, you know, I, I do stuff right around this hour. I usually am um, doing things still for the family or for, uh, you know, just riding around, doing stuff like that. I'm not reading. I'm not studying as much. I might listen to something like if I have audios or something like that, I might listen to something if I'm in the car and I'm riding around I'm taking care of some things, some errands, running some errands. But as far as trying to submit something in there or writing or trying to bring about those creative juices, I tend not to, me personally, I tend not to do nothing in those hours right there. I'm shutting down. I'm starting to settle down a little bit. You're normally um, on doing that. Like today I couldn't because I was, uh, out of town, so I was driving. I was on the highway then trying to get back here for this. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm usually exercises at that time of the day. I, I might do some of these exercises like this right here, cheek or something sometimes throughout the week. Um, I even do the uh, relaxation tension at times on that day. Um, but um, 5 to 7 is kidney hour. It's time to detoxify from work and nurture the kidneys. This... Sometimes I just can't type. I don't know. This is a good time to gather some rejuvenation, including sexual practices. Kidney yin lubricates the gene essence. Kidney chi helps to receive air, zong chi, and combine it with stomach digestion chi and original chi. The combination of kidney yang and kidney chi forms willpower. So when you got that kidney chi and that, and that kidney yang going right, you develop willpower or basically spiritual power, you know? So kidney is the essence, that's the spirit, you know what I'm saying, basically, um, or gene, is what gene is produced. Kidney yin lubricates the gene. So that's a good time for uh, sexual practices, get with your uh, loved one, get, you know, your significant other, and y'all go into uh, some sexual practices. Be, be wise, though, because uh, that is a, between one, it's seven, the woman is usually ovulating, especially right here when the sun is at its highest point. So be wise to either, um, you know, hold back or and don't bust or, or, or pull out and don't bust inside because it's a, if, you, if you're not have, trying to have children, if you're trying to have children, go ahead, if 12 o'clock, between 12 and 3, get right. She gonna get pregnant. <laughs> Y'all gonna get pregnant between twelve and three. If you go, hey, you gonna lay down while the sun is at its highest point and the woman's ovulating. You, you gonna get pregnant on that day, especially if it's uh, what three days after the period is over with, and it's uh at the highest point. Be careful. Watch yourself. All right. So uh, um, right here. Do, 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 Percadian, seven to nine, Percardium, that's the uh, covering of the heart. That's the protective layer of the heart. It's home time, time to protect the heart. Be with family and friends over a light evening meal. Best to go to bed slightly hungry. 
You know what I'm saying? You don't want too much on your intestines, large intestines or your stomach, small intestines, large intestines or your stomach, because the body's naturally shutting down um, between these hours right here. So that means the digestive system is shutting down. All right, so do winding down exercise, a little yoga, some dial yin, six healing sounds. Um, six healing sounds, meditation, that's what, um, that's that, uh, the um, transforming of negative emotions to higher emotions by way of the um, five elements, where it's uh, six element or the six sound is the procadium, the procadium or the triple warmer, basically. And that sound, we didn't go over the sounds though, but that sound is um, shoe. If I'm not mistaken, no, yeah, shoe. Followed by 30 minute to one hour meditation. The procadium yin protects the spirit by closing the heart. The procadium helps to find the right teacher and colleagues for safe creative expression. So by um going through that 30 minute meditation before bed, oh talking about some good dreams and being relaxed. With that yoga too, you know, I might not do yoga every night, but I I promise you the nights nice I do it three days out the week, three nights out the week, most definitely. But if those nights, yes, yes, those that sleep is just so good and you're just so relaxed, the body is so relaxed, no tension. And you wake up the next morning, you can feel the blood just going through all the joints properly. The muscles feel good and everything. All right, so nine to eleven, triple warmer, time to fall asleep, the triple warmer disperses the chi. All right, moves into new dimensions where you can um, discover your true identity. So get that triple warmer right. 9-11, that's, that's the basically melatonin is being produced, you know what I'm saying? So um, the healing, everything is good, you know, you're balancing the triple warmth distributes energy evenly between the three, three cavities of the body, creating balance and warmth. It prevents extremes of thoughts and behavior. So it's a good time. We need to be in the bed, like right now, you know what I'm saying? Gallbladder is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. sleep time. So we're sleeping. Right at that time or whatever, you know what I'm saying, rejuvenating. One to three AM, the liver restoration time. You should be in total yin state, fast asleep. This is when the ethereal soul, the hun, ventures off to the spirit world to converse with the immortals and past masters. This is the time when the unconscious is supreme. The hun passes this information to the corporal soul, the pope, the movement, energy, liver yang is action. Liver yin allows us to retreat and wait. The liver provides the wisdom to know when to move and when to be still. It governs the eyes, tendons, ligaments, and storage of blood. If you ever notice between those eyes right there, or when we're in that deep unconscious, subconscious state in our dream, that's when we deep sleep and we get no, we be seeing all type of people. You know what I'm saying? I was seeing my dream doing, I, I just had a dream, somebody would do Tachi in my dream the other night. I was like, what the, I ain't gonna go into it though. Three to five a.m. Uh, uh, oh, it's going be long. This is the grand time the corporal soul brings the information and inspiration from the spirit world and magic of the world of dreams back into the body. That's when we get back into our body from the ethereal plane, so the, you know, um, the spirit world and we, or the astral world, and we uh, bring those dreams back into the body and we let go of yang and reattach. We are letting go of yin and reattach to the yang, actually, back into the body. I got those backwards for some reason. Letting go of yin, letting go of yang and reattachment yin. Basically, it's a balance, but when we let go, um, that means it's, um, it's an external thing. It's a physical thing, so that's like, um, um, what is the word? I'm getting tired. What is the word I'm looking for? Uh, oh, active. So we let go. That's an active uh, type of thing. Reattachment is in. So that's a, um, that's receptive. That being able to uh, take in energy, whereas letting go is putting energy out. So that's y'all. You know, that's right. Letting go, reattachment, peace, prosperity, and protection. All right. So let's find these. Um, where do you go? Where do you go? I think I put them on here. I'm 
bring the camera up before we we'll give about 15 minutes of a good uh qigong here Actually, we go deeper Seafood right there. Um, seafood fine pain. Yeah, that's this. Pinions. So we're going to do these right here. This is uh, Yi Jin Jing. Yi Jin Jing basically means um, muscle tendon, muscle tendon ch uh, changing exercises. So it's going to strengthen your muscles and your tendons. Um, it's an external type of qigong, but it intent over matter. But intent over force, it is also a nagum or internal um, type of qigong as well. It can be, you know what I'm saying? Although it is uh, basically uh, focused on the muscles and tendons by utilizing yi or your mind, spirit, basically your intelligence, it allows the nagung aspect, the internal aspect, to also activate. Uh, so um, we'll go over the preparatory exercises before beginning practice. The chi needs to be awakened. So the preparatory exercises stimulate the body's energy cycle. It opens up the energy gateways and prepares the practitioners for actual energy work or qigong exercises. All exercises begin from the horse ride stance. So stand attentive and relaxed on the earth, starting with the hips. Move the pelvis slightly forward, straightening the natural curve of the lumbar region so the energy can flow unhindered upward along the spine. So the third to fifth vertebrae of the lumbar region should go slightly forward, and that straightens the natural curve in that area, straightening the hips with the hips, with the pelvis slightly move forward, straightening the natural curve of the lumbar region. So the third and fourth, third and fifth, not to bend them in, basically when the pelvis goes forward, you'll feel the third and fifth vertebrae or the lumbar vertebrae basically um, start to align with the top of the spine or with the um, thoracic vertebrae as well as the cervical vertebrae. Um, so straightening the natural curve of the lumbar region so that the energy can flow unhindered upward along the spine. Relax the area of the waist and hips so that the energy can sink, sink back down into the dantian. All right, so the waist and hips should be relaxed. Everything's sinking down. Light on top, heavy on the bottom. But the waist and hips, the waist, the, you know, the, stomach or basically right there i mean the lower abdomen and the hips should still be relaxed and the legs should be heavier than anything the heaviest part of the body should be in the legs the hu yin or energy gate is the point located between the anus and the genitals that's the little so that soft spot in between the perineum that's what they call it in the medical terms and the genitals uh, uh point located between the anus and the genitals needs to be mentally closed so that the small cycle is closed and no energy will be lost Bend the knees until you feel your thigh muscles working. So um, basically an inch to an inch and a half in the knees. The feet should be parallel to each other so that your ankles almost touch. Bear two-thirds of your weight in the balls of your feet, one-third on the heels. A Shaolin tradition, before any exercise begins, it is customary to circle the hands high above the head to collect the energy from the universe, sinking the palms downward. 
to be held in front of the hip heart region. So basically you come into uh, prayer hands or Buddha hands and um, sink the energy down into into the heart region. Oh, if we can get this on. All right, if you're watching. Mm. All right, so can't see my feet. light right now. Shoulders width apart, toes parallel. Um, he's talking about pelvis. So the lower back, the pelvis sink into it. The knees about an inch. Don't don't lock them out like that. Sink right, an inch for an inch and a half to the knees. Knees will be over the the ankles, they won't be in like that. They won't be out like that. They'll be right directly over the knees, be directly over the ankles, but they won't be over the toes. I don't see so far down to where they over the toes. About an inch, an inch and a half. Um, the chest, the shoulders will be very relaxed. Feet parallel, again, shoulder width apart. This is, this is a normal four stance. This is also Wu Chi, the boy. Emptiness. Right, so you stand right here, that'll be the uh, first posture, basically. All right, from there, do the circle of another hand, so that's the tra traditional opening for Shaolin. So when we, when we open up, and this brings in this. I mean, it's a it's a, a physiological thing too. So it's a, doing something for the atomical structure, the physiological structure. So your hands basically going to be on the side, feet shoulder width apart. You know, posture in the bottom. The set of the, the um the pelvic or the tailbone is going slightly forward. But stay relaxing your hips and your waist. Don't tighten up your your hips or your waist, I mean your stomach or lower abdomen or lower waist, stay relaxed in it. And the hips as well. Shoulders relax, drop all the way down. So you notice the shoulder blade when you put your hand, you put your hand on your on your uh, right shoulder blade, left hand on your right shoulder blade, and sink it down. You notice that muscle right there. You don't want that muscle right here to be tight or up like this. You don't want it up like that. So notice if it's up, just bring it down a little bit because when when we have that muscle up tense, it's going to obstruct the passage of the lung for lung energy because the shoulders are connected to the lungs. So if this is up like that and we're breathing in, we're not going to activate all the potential of our lung energy to pass through it to the heart or not so the flow of blood to get properly and she move properly. So make sure you sink the shoulders. Sink in the shoulders. Chest sunk in. Don't stick your chest out like that. Chest sunk in slightly. Don't stick it all the way into where you got to punch back. Your stomach. We breathe out. Gonna make a prayer. When you breathe in, breathe all the way. Huh? Sorry, man. Not too bad. All right. 
So first you breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Form through the hands, right over the apex of you. Breathe on the planet edge, breathe in. And place your hands. Uh, rest in there for a couple of seconds to relax. Like that. Breathe in. They breathe out on the way down. Right. I don't think it's going to be recorded like that where you're going to have the playback, but basically that's the opening for the any of the postures. All right. Our enzymes in the temples get the five points. Lagong, Lagong means five points. Or working, workers' palace. Um, so we rub the hands together very vigorously. And we put heat into them. All right. You rub like this. And you can rub them, you can put your head together like that, but now you can do one like this. So breathe in. Stay relaxed in the shoulders. Like that there. Breathe in. Like rubbing the lung out point. Then we place our hands on our temples, energizing the temples. So the hands go on the temples right here. This activates the left and right brain, relaxes the brain. This also helps with headaches. If you got a headache, rub your hands together. Especially, just, you can put it on the, you can actually put it on the spot where the headache is. And it alleviates the headache. But place it right here. We do this four times. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, making the stomach, making the abdomen large like a beach ball. Then breathe out, making the stomach go as flat as possible to the spine. I'm moving around. Normally, I don't, I don't be moving around or taking on the tattoos like that. I don't like to get out of my spot. You know, it's, it's it, you know, mindfulness. Basically, you know, what I'm saying, staying in that meditative state. Breathe in. And breathe out. Yeah. Put the hands down. You can do it one more time. So you breathe the hands in. And inhaling there. Then exhaling on the way down. Breathe in. Hold the breath. Making the abdomen large like a beach ball. Bringing up the perineum, the soft spot right there in between. And then float the hands back up to the temples. Breathe out. Breathe in. And then breathe out. So that's energizing the temples. We do a couple more. Washing the face is very similar to energizing the temples. Uh, but this is what takes place. I'm going to send this to you. Energizing the temples. Breathe. Press both of your warm palms. But to prevent injury from coming to abundant, breathe out once deeply into your feet so it can sink down below. We didn't do that, but um, also do that. But then um, the other was as well. This exercise calls to relax the body and the spirit because feet will require two halves of the brain are harmonized, encouraged, and creative and comprehensive thought. Do these early in the morning. Right, right before this Qigong, these Qigongs are good right before you go into that creative time period where you're writing and reading and everything. Help stimulate those energies. You, you bring in all that ancestral information back into full front too as well. So um, washing the face is next. Rubbing the hands again. Rub the hands um, a few times and then I, I go over it. Tradition just exercise repeat 24 times. It's, you know, say they do it 25 times, the women. So you ain't got to do it 24 times. That's really long. So it's really long. I might do it eight. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just for me, I might do it eight. But I'm, I know I'm gonna be out there for a minute, so I wanna get everything in that I can. So I have to minimize some of it. I might come back to it to breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. And then breathe out, washing your face. Bring the water back up, bring it in. And breathe out, just wash your face. Breathe in. Then breathe out, just wash your face from the skin. Do one more, breathe in. Just like you got a big handful of water, moving very slow, breathe out. Then bring your hands down. The next one is tapping. Excuse me. Tapping the head. Start tapping the head with loose and relaxed fingertips with both hands, moving from front to back over the top of the head to the base of the skull. Then move to the area above both ears, tapping down to the base of the templates. So it's like that. Right, we'll go over it. It aids with demanding mental work, headaches, and tension in the neck as well. All right, so tapping the head. You can rub your hands again if, if you wish. I normally do. You bring your hands up. These four fingers. Go from the center. All the way around to the top of the ear. The back up. Do that eight times. Breathe in here. Exhale here. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. All right. That's tapping the head. Now we're going to stimulate the middle of the body. This will be the fourth form right here. Stimulate the middle of the body. Form loose fist, laying the thumbs on top of the index fingers. Tap gently all along the center line of the body from the breastbone down to the abdomen. Tapping, um, oops. Tapping can be done somewhat hard at the top of the breastbone, especially along the thymus gland, which is stimulated, stimulated during tapping. Breathe in and tap from top to bottom or breathing out. When the body relaxes, the spirit becomes calm, conscious, and awakened. Tapping stimulates and harmonizes the primary energy channels along the front of the body and opens the gateway to the heart through which we can enter into spiritual union with the environment. Stimulating the thymus gland boosts the immune system and increases our defense and power to self-healing. Okay, so this is tapping the um, front of the body. Again, I rub my hands in. Then just go from the neck region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you breathe in. One, two, three, four. Exhale. We get the thumbs. Five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Harder here, softer as it get here. Just switch your hands. All right, do that four on each side or eight on each side. And you do as many times as you want to keep it even, though, keep the balance, right? Tapping legs and arms, um, place loose fists on the lower back and the tap downward, following the sides of the legs to the heels. Follow the outer edges of the feet to the toes and tap along the inside of the feet up to the ankles. Tap the insides of the legs with the palms facing legs, moving upward to the lower abdomen and the dantian. Repeat this several times. Continue tapping with the right fist on your right hand, left on your right 
right fist on your left hand and then gently tapping the outside of the arm. Oh, this is uh, tapping legs and arms. We'll go over that next time. So stimulating the middle of the body, tapping the head, washing the face, and energizing the temples. That's what we just went over. Um, once again, energizing the temples. Lag on. Five points, rub real good. Place them right here on the temple like that, like this. And just holding that, breathing in, breathing out. Washing the face, same thing. But you wash the face, place your hands same place. And then breathe out. It's more water. Breathe in, breathe out. It's more water. Breathe out. All right, tapping the head. Same thing, breathe in, come in. Get right here, tap all the way around. Right breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Um, tap to the center. Breathe in, tap to the center. From one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to throw this one in there too. Uh, tapping this one. So breathe in. And we'll cross our fingers like this right here. We we'll place our hands over our ears. And we're going to tap the celestial drum. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And that's going to move those energies right here. And I'm going to do a lot of Magado and everything right there down to the um the ponds and allow their energy to flow down the cerebral spinal fluid to flow down and then come back up. Rejuvenate on the exhalation. So inhalation, tap, exhalation, go down, inhalation. Comes back up, tap, and that's gonna give you those memories back over time. I just lost. I'm gonna throw that one in there, <laughs> but it's, it helps with the astral or with the um, ancestral and the, um, basically akashic records, the dark energy, dark matter. Akasha means space records, so the dark energy, dark matter. Um, gonna close out. Started at 7.30, so yeah, we've been in here for a couple of hours. I get things, you know. Appreciate you guys for putting up with me. I know I got a heap of talking I be doing sometimes, but it's all good. It ain't like that. I uh, appreciate, like I said, for you um, attending and, um, and learning more about you as I'm learning about myself as well. You know, everything's a, a memory thing, remembering, so... You know, I enjoy every experience. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care how many times I get pulled over by the police. I enjoy it. No, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, it, life, just enjoy everything. Treat everything as equal, as equal. Don't. We shouldn't be trying to separate this shit. That, once we start separating stuff, we lose our, our energy. Because if it, like we were talking about earlier, if everything came from the wave of potential, a minty or team, that's non being time, right? So that non being is undifferentiated energy matter. That means it has not been separated. Separation comes in at the spirit of eight, that's Sebek or Set, right? So when we get to Sebek, the eight spirit, or it's also um, in the Kabbalah sense, what is Sebek? Hot, hot means glory. But when we get there, that sublimation in in glory on the more pristine um, representation of, of what we call um, the A spirit. But when we are neglected and we're caught in the caught in the manifestation of material reality, then Sebek is that crocodile and is that beast mentality, or is that uh is that one that's going to separate the physical body and keep the physical from the spiritual 
at the eighth round. So seven and eight right there, you know, had to rule or uh, a net sack, a net sack, I mean, in victory and high meaning glory. But when they're not connected and combined or unified properly and we're utilizing energies in the wrong way, then um, the sublimation will not take place. Sublimation basically means to um, obtain, retain, and cultivate, or basically means to retain the energy. So when we ain't sublimating it, we exert the energy improperly, and it causes uh, other catastrophes, so to speak, in the reality, but we won't be connected to that wave properly, you know, the potential of our true self. So getting that flow of energy in there and, you know, getting getting the popping and juicing is fun shit, man. It's good shit. And so I appreciate you guys. Uh, like I said, attending. We're going to shut it down now. It's 1130. Um, you know what I mean? If uh, y'all have any questions, let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording. I'll send this out probably tomorrow. It's going to take all night to... Matter of fact, I can't do it tonight because I'm going to have to turn off my high. I'm on hot spot right now. So I'm going to have to turn it off because I, I, I run out of it if I leave it on all night. But um, I don't think it's but Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to turn it off. I'll probably do this tomorrow. I'll probably upload, I mean, download it onto the computer tomorrow sometime and try to send it out either Saturday or Sunday. Got a few things to take care of tomorrow, too. So get thanks and uh, say peace. I tell but also remember, you know what I'm saying, a Tim, Tim, Tom, non-being, non-thought, non-attached. You know what I'm saying? So harnessing and, and, and being able to control or basically being at one with our emotions, the energy and emotion, the dark energy, dark matter. You know what I'm saying? Try to make it, try to make this easy. And that's be so complicated as science tries to complicate things. So I'm bringing, what I'm doing, alchemical expression is the mysteries that's known and unknown. So that's the spiritual and the religious aspect. That's the left and right brain. So what's known is basically logic, left brain. What's unknown is basically, you know, the intuitive, creative aspects of ourselves. You know, the unknown. The mysteries, the mysteries that's known and, and unknown. So I'm trying to keep it in the most simplistic way that I can, you know, bridge both of those together properly to you guys from the way I've received it somewhat, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I've, I've jumped around, you know, I went from, you know, school of thought like Metaneta, Fox, and all this other stuff into quantum physics. You know, say that's where that's why the name is meta magician because I'm not really talking about metaphysical. I'd like to talk about, I'm also talking about the um, quantum physics of it. So meta and shin basically means the same thing. Spirit, you know what I'm saying? Meta means beyond, or shin means spirit, but basically. Meta means spirit as well, because you're dealing with quantum, quantum physics, metaphysics, the same thing. Quantum talking about the fifth or fourth, the central the spirit. But yeah, uh, whatever. But yeah, so I have to try, you know, we're not trying. Meta magician, signing off. All right, peace. <laughs>